Our next speaker for our Saturday morning session, we have uh, Brian Besco. Brian has a nice little tent out in the middle of the uh, exhibit area out front, and he's got these beautiful material artifacts, the spirals. Um, they're kind of, um, I don't know, so, some of them remind me of hula hoops. I've seen these things around for years and years, and he's got a pretty well thought out and implemented uh, way to make these things. And so that's some good credibility right there. Brian is from uh, Buffalo Gap, South Dakota in the Black Hills. It's a little town of about 134 people where he does uh, a lot of workshops. He's a Reiki master, an ordained minister, and he's a self-taught geodowser because there really are no schools for that. He got into this work partly through an analyzing this shape the Triskalion, which is an ancient Celtic motif, and it has always had a lot of power. Archaeologists have known about this for a long time and known about the respect that Celtic people had for this shape and that it would have some kind of implications technologically, but nobody knew what they were. Uh, Brian is starting to figure that out. He's also worked a lot with uh, Slim Sperling, who provided a lot of the information on making these uh, tensor rings. They're really just copper, mostly recycled wire with bronze brazing, and uh, they are really nice to have around. I've handled some of these things uh, made by other people in the past, and they work uh, very well in unexpected ways. He's um, worked with frequencies based on pyramid measurements. He's in the process of slowly quitting his day jobs and now is working with energy healers and clairvoyants, uh, getting feedback on how uh, his tools are working. Let's welcome Brian Besco. Thank you, Mike. All right, well, it is an honor to be here today with everybody. Um, I appreciate you guys all for showing up here this morning. Um, and as Mike was talking about the, uh, the Triscale, it's, uh, it is an ancient symbol, um, and as we're going to speak on water energetics, I'll just touch on the Triskelion here for a moment. Um, it's in a Celtic tradition; they have different uh, Triskelions, and usually they have a central point and then three legs that spiral out. Where this guy, as you see on the screen, it has the one central point with the two spirals on it. Um, people have been drawing this thing since they were kids. A lot of people have it tattooed on their body. Um, fishermen on the East Coast have been making them for decades and putting them in their holding tanks to keep their fish alive longer. Uh, so everybody knew that this uh, symbol had something to do with water. Um, through our own askings, we found out that this is actually a symbol of the water elemental, is what we call it. We call it Hedica. Um, with the gals who wrote the Dancing with Water book, The New Science of Water, this is a great book, I'll keep referring to it, uh, they called me up one day and said, well, we call it a Triskelion. And everything that you guys are putting out on what you believe this does with water, uh, we have all the scientific evidence on that. Uh, so basically, what the Hedica or Triskelion does is it puts out uh, vortices, uh, piezoelectric, that work with water. Um, you can take just the single Hedica or Triskelion without this entire water coaster, and you can put your glass of water on top of it and it will um, neutralize the pH out of very acidic water within 24 to 48 hours. Um, it also energizes the water. And it's uh, great because if, you, you know, if you're not sensitive to subtle energies or anything, you can actually use these Triskelions um, and tell a difference by sitting your water on there. And overnight, you'll be able to taste and feel a difference in the water that you drink. Um, and from there, we're just going to start talking about the tensor rings. Um, the tensor rings were discovered by Slim Sperling in uh, 1996. Uh, him and his partner, Bill Reed, who's still in Colorado, uh, discovered the rings. Uh, Slim went and um, he had just taken a piece of wire. And uh, he was familiar with the idea of cubit links. A cubit length, uh, the one that we're using and that he discovered works in a tensor ring, is the um, royal cubit. It's found above the king's chamber. And uh, 
in the Pyramid of Giza. And so this royal cubit, the 20.6 inches, is uh, something that he would cut a single wire to. Now, with this uh, whole theory of how these things work, is that a straight line, a solid object, contains a polarity. So you have on one end a vortex of energy that comes in, and you have energy that flows through and a vortex of energy that goes out. Now, you can find this in trees, you can find it in a wooden dowel. Um, there's actually tribes that knew about this, and when they built their um, dwellings, they would actually use specific lengths of trees and always butt them up so you had a circular flow, so you were creating a tensor field. Um, so, what gives that that power then is that flow of energy. Now, when Slim went and he cut it out to a specific length and he put it together, what he found was that this was creating a vortex that was a one-way vortex out one side and one way out the other side. And they found, just through playing around with it, that one side of this produced a healthful and beneficial energy for, uh, for the human, while the other side did not. Um, you know, and they played around with, uh, you know, fungus and plants and everything with this, and um, they had uh, an incident that led them to believe that, these, that one side was no longer healthful and beneficial. So what Slim figured out was you take that piece of wire and you fold it in half, and then you do the twisting on it. When you twist the wire and you bring it together, I'll show you here on this slide up here, is that where this comes together, you have both ends of your wire that come back on themselves. So what this is basically doing is this is creating an energy flow from one of the wires that goes around the loop and comes back onto itself and creates that continuous flow. The other wire, which has the flow in the opposite direction, it flows around this way and creates continuous flow. So what this is doing is creating a counter-rotating vortex that comes out of here. Now, this guy here, the uh, royal qubit that Slim discovered, it produces 144 megahertz frequency. Um, and again, you cut this wire off at any other length and it's just a piece of twisted copper wire. Copper is a pretty special element because it is a crystalline structure, um, but it doesn't uh, produce that frequency. So Slim Sperling took uh, the royal qubit that they found and they took it to Hans Becker um, in his private lab. And Hans discovered another frequency, and he was actually able to uh, put this on his machines, and I really wish I knew exactly what it was that he measures the frequency with. I actually need to find that out because we have discovered three new qubit lengths. Um, but, uh, so he discovered that this was 144 megahertz, the Becker qubit's 177 megahertz. And again, these both produce that uh, counter-rotating vortex. It produces it in a column, so this is a, just a column of energy that goes out of both sides. Um, so I don't claim to be a quantum theorist or, or a physicist or anything of that nature. I consider myself to be a master tool builder. And um, so this is what I do. And the reason that I came here to the conference uh, to speak today is because I would like somebody to play with this uh, technology because these things produce an infinite amount of energy. And it's just trying to figure out how to pull this energy out of here, this tensor field energy. Um, they did do some research, too, with, with water, which is what, uh, you know, the main topic here today is about water energetics. Um, there was actually, they took uh, two beakers of water, they put them on a balance beam, and then they put one of the beakers of water within this column of light, and it actually gets measurably lighter. The reason for that is this contains the highest piezoelectric properties out of anything that, uh, that has been tested. Um, in this one lab, and that was the gentleman who coined the term Ormus, is the one who did the testing on these things. Um, so, with that, it, uh, you know, it dep it's dependent upon the, uh, the salts and the other minerals that are in the water, and you know, if anybody knows much about the Ormus, on creating those to spin to actually create that water to be lighter in weight. Um, and again, these things, just like the, the Triskelion, they will take acidic water and change it to pH within, or to a neutral pH within 24 to 48 hours. Um, so here recently, we actually discovered um, three new qubit links. And the qubit links that we've discovered are through dowsing. Now, um, it's, it's tough when we do not have the, the scientific evidence to say, okay, this one's 188 megahertz frequency, this one's 333, 
This one is 764. But um, that's the thing is that there is no real tools that can show you the way the energy flows or what these things are doing. But we can do it by experiential. Um, because most of the rings and things, um, rings and subsequent tools, are used uh, in healing practices, is what a lot of people are using these uh, rings for. There's been a lot of reports uh, since 1996. Uh, Slim Sperling's widow, uh, she has LifeLight Technologies, and they have done extensive research, uh, mainly while Slim was alive. And, um, and I'm not sure what they've done since 2007 when Slim passed. But I actually have never had the privilege to actually meet the wonderful Slim Sperling in person. I've worked with a lot of people who have, um, and it is, he's a pretty, pretty fascinating gentleman. Um, and again, he was a self-taught geodowser, just like I was before I ran into the tools. Um, so with that, um, we're finding that these things work with electromagnetics. Um, he used these, uh, all the different tools and the qubit links um, especially in Denver, he would go around in Denver and find all these magnetic lines, the Hartman grid lines, um, any other geopathic stress lines, and he would take certain cubit lengths, so usually the 20.6 inches, and he would staple it into the ground, um, make it kind of like an L, like a dowsing rod, he would staple it into the ground, and like the Hartman grid lines, when they come into a building, they'll actually hit this staple, and they'll bounce up and over. Because uh, not only did Slim believe it, but there's a lot of uh, German doctors who believe that if you spend too much time underneath of the uh, intersecting of those uh, grid lines. Um, it can be detrimental to your health. Uh, this is the GDV imaging, the gaseous discharge visualization of uh, the Hedica. And this just shows how the energy moves in it. Um, we've also done the research with the, with the Hedica for water energizing where we sit a glass of water on top of it for 10 minutes and then we do a before and after the water droplets. And uh, the after is just, it, that little water droplet is just electrified. And you can see the video is actually on my website of the uh, water droplets that we've, we've done the gaseous discharge visualization with as well. Um, the, uh, the other GDV imaging that we did, um, if you could show the, the next video, this is showing um, a tensor ring. Now the imaging on this, the camera lens is only about three inches, so this is a really small tensor ring. And um, it just kind of shows the, the field that's going within it there. Um, because again, that field is pretty much contained within the center of the ring and that column that goes out. And this is a magnet. And again, this is just a small refrigerator magnet. And it's just kind of showing how the, uh, the magnetic lines are flowing on this. Um, the reason that I wanted to do, uh, try to show this is that um, I would like to show that this is producing a Meissner effect, which is pulling out the magnetic lines and adding it to the tensor ring. Oh, thank you. So within, um, within the tensor ring, you see that it's uh, actually pulling the, the magnetic lines out and it's arcing them over onto the copper. So this is not because of a magnetic principle because you know copper is not mag isn't, uh, except magnetism. So, um, I don't know if we can actually prove that this is a room temperature superconductor, but that is what uh, everybody has always said about these things, uh, because they do negate magnetic lines. And again, where Slim is doing the stapling into the earth, um, we're finding that these things will restructure electromagnetics and geomagnetics. And so, where these produce a column of light, um, I've made these other structures that are, it's actually the genesic crystal. It's uh, discovered by Dr. Langerman in the 1940s, a plant geneticist. And so he discovered this, this uh, structure that he used uh, in his work uh, for plant genetics. And uh, basically where this will create a column of light, when it is out like this, it creates more of a sunshine effect. So again, this is stuff that uh, we're only, like Slim Sperling again, we use a lot of clairvoyance, uh, a lot of dowsing, muscle testing to show how the energy flows on this. So people are seeing that the energy flows on this thing about uh, three to four miles wide altogether and that it just shines out in the sunshine. Now, if you're sensitive, um, you can feel it when you put like a crystal or 
um, any other type of object inside of this uh, sphere, that it also acts as a broadcaster. So this thing is broadcasting out um, the information on a crystal within that three mile or four mile bubble as well. Um, so it does act like a broadcaster. But the beautiful thing about the tensor energy is that um, these things are transmuters of energy. Um, they change a lower vibration energy into a higher vibration. You can see that on uh, people who work in crystal shops, uh, especially if they are in tune to crystal energy, where they can see where a crystal is uh, you know, kind of a darker, holding a lot of uh, energy um, that's, that's not beneficial. Um, they can put that either inside of a, the, the tensor field of the ring or inside of a sphere, and they notice that their crystals become clean and cleared. Um, so it's mainly been people who are doing energy healing and other types of energy work that have been traditionally using these tools. Um, let's see, could you pass out some of these rings for me? These are, if you guys would like to just play around with these, because I'd love for you to try to get a feel. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Um, love for you to try to get a feel on the, the tensor rings. These are three different frequencies that he's passing out. There's the Royal Cubit, the 144 megahertz. There's the uh, Becker Cubit, the 177. Uh, there's the 188 megahertz and the 333. Now, um, when you put them, the tensor rings, in two different forms. Um, let's see, could you cue up the, uh, the overhead again? When you put the uh, rings into different forms, such as the spheres, the energy flows differently. We also put them into these coils. When you put them into a coil, the energy actually flows in one end, in the other end, it mixes the energy together, and it flows back out both ends. So what this is doing is this is actually creating a large toroidal field. And the toroidal field out of uh, these coils, are we're seeing them as going out um, up to a half a mile, and so it creates almost a one mile toroidal field. And this tube torus, um, again, is the, the tensor field energy. Um, we like to claim that uh, all this tensor field energy that goes out into the environment is restructuring electromagnetics and geopathic. And again, the only evidence that we have on that are people who are sensitive to EMFs, to uh, cell phone towers and such. They can have one of these in their proximity and it clears everything up for them. Um, and then again, in just the clairvoyance that we have that can see how the energy flows in these. And I'd like to pass these uh, coils out too because these coils, I can actually hardly hold on to them because they buzz my fingers up so much. Um, Thank you. So let's see. And I don't know if anybody had a chance to, to read the article that was in the, uh, the Extraordinary Technology uh, magazine here recently. And it was an article that I wrote with the assistance of a couple of really wonderful people, and that is uh, the folks from Dancing with Water, um, MJ and Melanie, because they've done all the scientific research and worked with all the scientists on on all the tools for water energizing. But also uh, Valerie uh, Solheim, she's in Colorado, she's a beekeeper, and she's done extensive research on all these tools with beekeeping, and has had just fantastic, phenomenal results on, on uh, the production of honey and, uh, and the hives wintering over. So um, she calls them energy transfer tools, and uh, she's, um, she works with Bill Reed a lot. Uh, Bill Reed does a lot of work still in the uh, Colorado area for geopathic and also the tools. He's getting ready to retire. Cubit links. Um, I just want to talk to you real quick about cubit links. Um, the different cubits that are out there, we've only found these five cubits that work um, in a tensor ring. There's other cubits that work in straight lines. These again are lines that are, are links that come out of the Great Pyramid. Uh, this longest one here, this 25 inches, is called the black cubit. Um, there's another one, um, there's a Riemann cubit, there's actually six cubits that are arrayed in the king's chamber, and they all produce a frequency. Um, this black cubit, this uh, 25 inches, it actually contains um, the frequency of hydrogen within it. Uh, the frequency of hydrogen is 8.3 inches, and so it actually holds that frequency within here. So this uh, symbol, it's actually, again, another ancient symbol, um, 
this thing actually will help to remediate electromagnetics and geopathic as well. Um, this is actually based on pre-Egyptian, pre um, Lemurian, Atlantean, whatever you'd want to call it. It is the very old, old traditions that uh, came up with the measurements, came up with all the sacred geometry, and we're trying to base all our tools on it. Um, so let's see. Um, so we're trying to make the claim again that uh, the rings produce not an electric nor a magnetic field, that they produce a tensor field. The, where the tensor came from is uh, John Archibald Wheeler. He's the one that coined the term black hole. He helped to create uh, nuclear fission. Um, so uh, Dr. Wheeler um, played around with the, uh, the mathematics of this, and he called it uh, for, for tensor mathematics. And in the 50s, he was playing with closed loop coils trying to create tensor fields. And uh, so, Slim, uh, afterwards, after he discovered all this, he found out about John Wheeler, and uh, you know he did even more research on that. Um, so that's where we get the name tensor. And uh, you know, all these fields that we work with, we have so many of these different energy fields, and we don't really have the names or can grasp them. You know, maybe it's chi, maybe it's life force, maybe it's zero point. You know, nobody really can say what any of this stuff is, and. I, I look forward to the day when it, we have the equipment to where we can uh, reach everybody who is not sensitive to the subtle energies or can see them uh, for the rest of us. Um, I'm slowly becoming sensitive to them, though. Um, so I'd like to talk just a little bit about uh, the Meisner effect and, um, and superconductors. So the, the hyperphysics uh, lab in Georgia um, they talk about uh, the zero resistance in, in something that creates a superconductor. Well, we're really showing that uh, within these tensor rings that it is always creating um, a, a field in there that you always have that energy flowing around because it's the energy that's created from those straight lines from that wire. So it's always has a counter-rotating vortex, so it is always energized. And um, as far as pulling that energy out, uh, there's somebody that actually has a may have a clue on how to do that. And that is to uh, take a ring, and you know the frequency that it is uh, resonating at, and you take a wire, and you bring it up close, and you bring this wire to that same resonant frequency, and you put a amperage into this wire that comes in. And the theory is, is that it will arc over and start to pull, pull it out in amperage. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that up in case anybody is really interested in trying that out and seeing if you can create, uh, you know, pull the energy out of this thing. Um, none of this stuff is proprietary. It is, um, well, it's not anymore. Uh, I have came along and created videos for free on YouTube, how to make all the tensor rings, how to make the spheres, um, and given the qubit lengths that we knew at that time. And if anybody is interested in the qubit lengths, I have them right here, the two new qubit lengths. Um, I'll give you two of those. Um, it is for the uh, 188 megahertz ring, which is the one that I wear around my neck. Uh, people use this thing uh, for, it increases blood flow to the brain. It also resonates with the pineal gland. When you bring that down rates, even with your pineal, it is decalcifying your pineal gland. And that's what we were seeing and playing with, and I know it's a huge difference on, on just my awareness when I'm wearing this ring. Um, so the measurement of this ring in inches is 28.85748. Now we get really specific on uh, the measurement of these rings, and I realize that you probably will not be able to get that specific when you are cutting these things. Um, but its intention is huge in all this stuff. Um, when I first started making the rings, and when I was given the information on how to make the rings, I was just given the information um, how to make them you know, in the physical plane. And that is just to create it, cut it to a specific length, put it back together. We found out that some of the rings weren't actually working until I realized the power of intention and the knowledge that uh, copper was a crystalline structure that accepts intention, energy, and will release that. Um, so that's what I did as I started working with these things with intention. When we teach our workshop once a month up in South Dakota on the creation of the tensor rings, I always time it so that everybody gets a Reiki master certificate. Um, 
at that time. So we do a half a day where we give everybody their Reiki masters, so that way people realize the, the potential of your own energy that you're using, and we have that infused in the tools. Um, because that is really a huge thing, is intentions. You don't really have anything out there without intentions. Um, I'd like to give you the length for the 333 cubit ring, if you're interested. It is um, in inches, again, it is 39.3131568. And again, that's a, quite, a, quite a specific length, but uh, with your intentions, you can uh, get it very, very close and still have a working ring. Um, so anyway, there's, uh, there's those rings, uh, the 188, the 333 ring is one that we use um, to amplify sound. The 333 ring is used to amplify other subtle energy tools. You can put it around your harmonizer if you have one from Slim Spurling or any of the tools that I create, and it'll actually amplify that out. Radionics is really big in using all these tools for their, um, for their antennas for their amplifiers. So if you talk to somebody in radionics, they're really going to know about the rings and the harmonizers, and they're starting to get to know my tools as well. But this 333 ring, um, my sister does healing with uh, bowls. She does healing with sound. I mean, we've, she's had people with pancreatic cancer sent home to die. They come there for sound breath color therapy, three 20-minute sessions, and there's no cancer cells left in the body. Um, just from sound, breath, and color healing. It's a very self-empowering technique because the, the, uh, the person that is receiving the, the sound does all the visualizations with it. But what her and other, client, and other people who are using sound healing, uh, especially crystal bowls, are finding is that when you use these rings around them, even their clients who are not sensitive to the energies notice a huge change in the, uh, in the bowl's power. Um, people who see sound as color can see that uh, a bowl will be purple and that it will have um, color that comes out in uh, varying shades. And when you put the 333 ring around it, the color bands actually get wider and brighter. Um, and again, I would love to be able to see something like that, you know, like a lot of people do, but uh, I just take what I feel because I feel a change in the sound. Um, the next cubit that uh, we were given is the 764 megahertz ring. Um, and with the tensor rings, they all have that counter-rotating vortex that comes out of both sides. But it always starts right here in the center plane of the ring. And that's the zero point where they all start to go out both sides. With this ring right here, actually, you can feel that the, uh, that zero point is right here. It's out from the ring. One side has, um, instead of a column, it has more of a tornado effect. The other side has an absence of energy, and you can feel that. It's like a black hole right through here. And so we really do not know what is going on with this ring, but you can change the direction, again, with intention. With your intention, you can change the flow of which side that vortex is on, which side that's going out. Um, the applications of these things, um, plants. This ring right here really does wonders with plants. Uh, it brings them back to health. Um, I actually had a severe blight in my uh, greenhouse at one time. We couldn't get rid of it. It actually moved into the outdoors. So, you know, I tried all the chemicals. I tried everything organic. We could not get rid of this blight. And what I did is I created a very large tensor field generator, and I put it around a whole grouping of plants within the greenhouse. And after about three months, these plants were finally back to perfect health while everything else around them still had the blight. Um, so that was huge proof to me and um, on what these things do with plants. Um, and, they've, and again, if you uh, look at the book um, Slim's Universe, uh, Cal Garrison and, did interviews with Slim Sperling, and they have a lot of experiential data in there on what they did with plants and fungus. Um, they also worked with weather. You always heard of people lassoing tornadoes with Slim's big rings or calming rain clouds. Um, and so there's been a lot of people that I've met that come up and talk to me and tell me their stories about pointing these things at tornadoes and they tornadoes diminish and such. Um, I've been looking for a tornado to try that, but I still haven't found one yet. So I'll let you know if I ever do. Um, so let's see. Some of the other observations um, by Hans Becker. Um, he's, a, uh, he's a physicist, an astrophysicist. Um, what Hans Becker said was, um, 
when he analyzed the, the structure of water that a tensor ring had been around, um, he said that the, the energy field of the ring um, created uh, some aspects in the water. He said that he used a spec spectrophotometer and found that the rings altered the optical transmission of the water. They allowed more light to pass through and they charged the water's absorption of photons. And these are indicators of changes of molecular structure. Um, and he also goes on to say that they organize the space, they create coherency um, within their energetic column. And so this creating the coherency is part of why Bill Reed, the co-creator of these things, calls this an anti-gravity field, is because it is uh, creating coherency. And that is part of, uh, of the whole theory of gravity, is that uh, you create coherency and you lessen the gravity, gravitational field. And that's basically what uh, healers are doing with these things, is that they are putting these underneath the tables, your healing tables that do energy work. And where you're doing body work, um, you're working on the physical body, but through energy. And so what this is doing is it's, uh, it's just raising the vibration of all the cells in your body so that the energy healing takes better. And so all the healers that I know that have used these things are, are very, um, they have a lot of great things to say about them. They feel that they really help uh, the physical body take the healing better. So, um, let's see. So it enhances plant growth and vitality. Um, you put this uh, ring around the water and two to three hours, it, uh, it reduces the, the smell of the chlorine in your glass. Um, and again, it just improves the water taste when, you, uh, when you're drinking that water. So you can definitely tell that there's something going on there. Um, and the, the very acidic changes to a neutral pH 24 to 48 hours again. Um, people use these for calming nerves, whether it's on shoulders or wrists. I actually wear them around my wrists because of all the plier work that I do. It, uh, I can tell when I don't wear them. Um, and you know, a lot of people have attributed that to copper throughout the years, because copper is a pretty uh, phenomenal metal, but it's the, uh, the tensor rings. So everybody always comes up to me and says, oh, cool, copper bracelets. Yeah, my grandpa used to wear those all the time, you know, and they'd always do great things. Um, so it's, it's uh, tough to try to explain some of this stuff at some times. Um, let's see, and so as far as the uh, electromagnetics go, um, we also make the cell phone rings. Now, there's a lot of people who are very sensitive to cell phones that, uh, you know, they need to wear a earbud that goes from your cell phone up to your ear. And um, so we have not done anything besides muscle testing and dowsing and clairvoyant to what we know that these cell phone rings are actually removing the radiation and transmuting it. But so we don't have any actual evidence other than, again, observation and feeling, because those who have to wear the earbuds when they're listening to their telephone, they can actually use their telephones now and put them up to their ears, carry them on their person, and they, they have no effect. Um, so in how we make the, uh, the cell phone rings is, I'll just sit here on this uh, whiteboard, is that um, where you have a normal tensor ring, it creates a column of light. Um, could you put me on the whiteboard? And um, where you, when you flatten a ring, you actually flatten the ring and it creates more of a wall, um, more of a sheet. So if you come up here with your dowsing rods, you can find that this little ring, instead of not finding any energy on the sides, you'll find that the energy comes out about a foot out of the sides of the rings. Um, so as far as uh, flattening the copper, it seems to, to change again the way the energy flows out of the tensor rings. Um, and we make, you know, all the way down to the fine jewelry, like uh, Slim Sperling always made the harmonizer, and we make this little guy, um, just a tiny little tensor field generator. And this little guy here we're finding goes out uh, and puts about a three quarter of a mile bubble out around you. Um, and the nice thing about any of, the, any of the tensor field generators is that you can actually put in a uh, stone or a crystal or whatever type of energetic tool that you use and it transmits that energy. Um, all this stuff is used, um, all this stuff that comes out of here again is healthful and beneficial because this transmutes um, everything that goes through it. So that's why I really truly feel that this stuff, this technology cannot be weaponized 
because um, it only allows beneficial intentions to go through there. And that's been our experience. Perhaps if you constructed these in the correct way that are in an incorrect way, you could use them for kind of some kind of a weaponization. Um, and that's what uh, Bill Reed's really scared of. You know, he keeps really low key because, um, you know, he's scared of all this free energy stuff where, you know, in the past uh, people have ran into issues of trying to release this uh, information. But, um, I don't know. I actually have released information on YouTube about uh, the Federal Reserve note where it actually has a vortex that comes out of the Federal Reserve note on your dollar bills and that you can actually run your dollar bill through a tensor ring and then it changes the direction of the vortex on your um, U.S. Treasury seal. And uh, because the vortex that's coming out is sending out information and energy. And if you hold a pendulum up there or find somebody that has one, ask them to hold that above that U.S. Treasury seal and see which way the direction flows and ask them to check and see if it's a helpful and beneficial energy. And it won't be. Uh, so you run it through a tensor ring and it changes the direction flow of that uh, vortex. And so then you can have somebody hold their pendulum up there and just go in the opposite direction, which is pulling energy in instead of pushing it out. Because with energy, any kind of energy that goes out, you have information that goes on that. Um, and that's part of how we make this coaster work, is um, you see the black specks that are in the coaster, um, again, this is for charging water, is it's shungite. And uh, if any guys are familiar with shungite, it's uh, the fourth carbon. It's uh, found in the village of Shunga in Russia. And um, the gentleman got the Nobel Peace Prize in 96 for discovering fullerenes. Buckyballs, if any of you guys know what the buckyballs are. It's just fullerenes. Fullerenes are found in lightning strikes and in this carbon. Um, the gals from Dancing with Water have had four independent lab results showing that when you drop um, this carbon into your water directly, it transmutes the fluoride out of your water. But the thing is, is that it still absorbs the fluoride, so they'll last for a while, and then you can't get the fluoride out of there. But the thing is, is that these things work with the water energetically. And so when you have a tensor ring, you create this column of energy. Within this energy column goes information. And uh, the, um, the hedica within here, that energy gets sent out, that information, but also the fullerenes. So the fullerenes in this thing, in theory, should work energetically with your water. Now, I've tried a lab result after 48 hours, and it had not removed the uh, fluoride from the water. But that was naturally occurring fluoride that we have in the Black Hills, and so it did not remove that fluoride. Um, so again, we just need more test results done with all this stuff. Um, I'd love to be able to go meet Dr. Emoto and get uh, some test results done. He wants $6,000 for a photograph, though, so unless somebody would like to... Uh, send me to Japan with a pocket full of money to get testing done, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Um, and I keep sending him materials to test, but it hasn't quite got there yet. But uh, So that's the theory that um, within that column, uh, just like when you put a crystal inside of a sphere, that it transmits that energy out, uh, we feel that's what it's doing with anything that you sit inside of that column. So it should take that shungite energy, that uh, fullerene, to put that into your water. Um, Let's see. So, also, um, Valerie Solheim, who, who wrote the, the Beehive Effect, uh, that's what uh, she's, uh, she's doing is to take in, um, what she has done is she's taken the tensor ring and she's using this to transfer energy. That's why she calls them energy transfer tools. And the energy that she's transferring is she's done um, all these CDs that are uh, the beehive CDs that uh, she's put in a microphone inside of a hive and she calls it bees healing bees and bees healing beans and uh, they're healing CDs and not only for humans but also for bees. So instead of sitting out there on her beehive and trying to find something that plays this music over and over again, what she's discovered is that she can take a CD, put it within this column and it transmits the energy from that CD out. Now, when you buy a harmonizer from Slim or from LifeLight, they always send you a CD that you play into the harmonizer that is the frequency of a rain cloud. And this is supposed to amplify the harmonizer and uh, send broadcast all this out. You can do the same by just sitting it on top of the CD. 
And actually, Valerie talks about it in this book, too, that you can actually just use a quartz crystal as your transmitter instead of a tensor ring, sitting on top of a CD, and it transmits that information out. How do you prove that? Well, I don't, yeah, that's, that's another one. Um, so a lot of this stuff is just um, so much about uh, the feeling of it that uh, we need to find a way that everybody can understand what this technology is doing and accept it as a valid technology because it truly is a valid and powerful tool and it's so simple and easy to make. And again, there's the instructions on my website on how to make all the rings. Um, there's the first two links, and if you call me, I'll even give you the link to the big ring. Um, I've been kind of hesitant on putting it out as public knowledge, but uh, I'll certainly share it to somebody who, who I feel compelled to, um, because we really don't know what this ring's doing yet. But um, I'm happy to, what's that? What is your website? The size? Oh, the website. The website is twistedsage.com. And I'll put the card up here so you can see. Um, and it's, uh, and on that website, you know, it kind of shows all the other fun stuff we do, like uh, while I've been here, I've been night lighting, uh, doing the Merkaba activations. And the Merkaba, again, it's the human light body. It's found around the body in a microwave range frequency, and it uh, does everything the tools do. It protects you from electromagnetic frequencies, uh, like the coils. The coils, um, actually, people are finding that the coils assist in astral travel, dream work, uh, sleeping. They aid in communication. They do a lot of really fantastic things, um, everything that your Merkaba can do. Um, Anyway, if anybody's interested, we're doing a Merkaba activation tonight to the last one in, the last one in Albuquerque. Um, the awesome thing about the coils, though, the coils are great for water energetics. We're getting ready to actually start electroplating uh, just for the purpose of the coils because you put this coil inside of a water line, um, and where I can feel the, the energy of the coil, when you... Um, run water directly through it, you can feel the same energy in the glass if you can feel the coil. So you'll feel that energy in the water. So that uh, energy in that water, that tensor energy, is transferred almost instantly when you run water through this coil. And so it's, uh, it's really a fantastic thing. Um, and so we're going to start plating them and being able to get them out in the market. And the thing is, uh, being a water operator and playing around um, with water is all the different pipe fittings. So we discovered that the, uh, the, um, the same pipe always goes up to your sink, which is that half-inch FIP. So we just make a little copper tube that uh, you can put up underneath your sink. That way it is universal for everybody. You don't have to get special fittings. You can just screw it up in there. And then every time you pull water out of your tap, you get the energized water. Um, so that's a, a great trade secret for anybody who works in water energetics is to make them that half-inch FIP because then it's universal. Um, so, yeah, I love to share information. I am more than happy to share any of this information openly with everybody because, um, again, I just feel that uh, somebody's got to be able to have the passion and the drive and the motivation to, uh, and the tools to be able to test this stuff, to be able to further it. Um, you know, because there was 64 cubits known to man, and um, out of the six out of the king's chamber, again, we only have one that works. So there's all these other cubit links out there, and I've tried about 18 of them to put them into rings. The interesting thing is the 333 ring actually works in a straight line and in a ring. So that is a very interesting thing. Um, and what, what the frequency is in the straight line, I don't know if it's the same frequency as a hoop. I would kind of doubt it. But, um, so it's, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to cover, but I think I'd probably just like to open it up for questions and discussion um, for everybody, if anybody has any, any feedback or questions on, on the tensor rings or the hedicas or any of the stuff that we do. Yes. Folks, if we could come up to the oh. square and ask okay. questions. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There you go.
when you use the vertical coil, mm -hmm. does, is there a difference when the water's run over it and collected versus just immersing the coil in the glass of water after it's come out of the tap? That's a good question. I've never um, set a coil in the water um, because through our own muscle testing is that, um, you know, you have copper water lines and that's water that comes through there is always beneficial. But when you put like a Hedica in the water or any of the uh, tensor tools in the water, it's beneficial at first, but it's not beneficial over a period of time because you're ingesting too much of the copper. So I've never tried to sit it in, in there because I haven't electroplated yet. And so actually when I get home, I'll actually have time to start electroplating and, and experiment a little bit with that. And, um, and again, if anybody is interested in experimenting with uh, the coils in water, um, I'm happy to work with you on that. Um, yeah, without knowing some kind of target of what the structured water would do in the differential situations, it's kind of tough to project. But I know with a lot of the flow forms, especially that Steiner talked about in, in, in biodynamics, things like that, there's quite a bit of difference between that and like homeopathic uh, materials being impressed into the structure of water. So anyway, that's what I was groping for. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, and that's what I like about, um, you know, the coasters is that you're getting the energy of, of three different uh, sources of, of energetics there. Um, thank you. Uh, you mentioned that the energy would go out, say, a half a mile. How was that measured? And again, we only use uh, clairvoyance, muscle testing, and dowsing is the only way that we can tell um, how the energy flows or how far out it goes. And I really wish that there was an a, a instrument that could measure that field. Um, you know, because otherwise, and I don't take just one person's um, viewpoint on this, is that I, when I make a tool, I send it out to various people and, um, and they don't have communication with each other, and there are various either master dowsers or clairvoyants, um, and they all send me back the information on the specific tool, what it's doing, how far out it goes, how the energy moves, and I compile that and take everything that they say the same, and that is what I base my truth on um, with this stuff. And so it's really hard to uh, share what my truth is and expect anybody else to accept that, you know, because that is the only way that we can measure it. So, uh, I deal with the Royal Ray frequency generator, and some of the frequencies you mentioned is in my book. And I'm wondering what the correlation of that is. I do too. Wow. Uh, have you done any work with clairvoyance on using silver plating and gold plating or combinations of precious metals on these coils yet? I have not yet. Um, I know Slim did a lot of work with, with clairvoyance on that, and from my understanding is it, uh, it amplified and just kind of changed the whole energy of them. Um, and Slim also, he would um, put the beads on all of his tools as well. Um, and the only ones that I put the beads on are, um, and could you, could you put the whiteboard up for me? Um, the only ones that I put beads on are these really small guys um, that I created specifically as the money changers that you run your dollar bills through. Um, but we have found through you know our own devices is that uh, these two beads on here actually increase the uh, the potency of this ring by three times. And um, I know a lot of people who who use these beads and um, the gold plating and silver plating uh, to just change the subtle energies of the rings. So there's a lot of things that you can do um, with the rings to, to just, you know, upgrade them to change them. So. Uh, two little questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one I didn't understand when you were showing us the videos and the energy emitting. What, what were you showing us? How were you getting that? Um, you mean for, for the tensor ring and the magnet? Yeah, you had on the screen a couple of videos. You had the magnet and the tensor ring, yeah. Okay, um, so with the magnet and the tensor ring, what I was trying to show was that, um, that there's a little bit of the energy within the tensor ring. And this one here, I was trying to show you a before and after of the magnet. What, um, what are you, how are you getting this film? Like, what, what are you doing oh, to get that? Okay, this is a gaseous discharge visualization. It's a step above Krillian photography. Um, they use GDV imaging in, uh, like in Russia, they use it in all their hospitals. There's a lot of uh, hospitals around the world, except for the U.S., that rely on the, the, the feedback that you get from gaseous discharge visualization for the human body. 
Um, and I believe that there might be somebody here that's doing GDV imaging that gives a biofeedback. Um, and so basically, I couldn't tell you exactly what, what this is showing. It's showing some form of energy and the movement of it. Can, can you do that GEV filming, GDV, sorry, mm -hmm. with, with uh, you know, on a larger scale with some of the other things? On, on one of the what's that? Like the larger rings, that kind of thing. Oh, um, and see, his lens is only a three-inch lens, and, and, so, um, and these cameras are super expensive, and so I'm unsure if he's able to get a larger lens on that. He's actually in the process, uh, this is a gentleman um, that's down in Corpus Christi, and he's in the process of doing the water experiments with me like he did with the Hedica, and uh, we didn't get them done in time before I came here because I would love to have been able to show um, you know, how it takes a drop of water and changes it energetically like we did with the Hedica. Yeah. But, um, I'd like to see that too. Uh, second one is short question. I noticed on the cell phone uh, rings you had, you'd flatten them and you, there were, there were two of them and they were placed in particular places. What, what's actually, going on there? Um, <laughs> actually, they're, the first one was an experiment just to see how long it would stay on there. And so <laughs> it stayed on there for quite a while, for about four months. And I'm pretty tough on my phones. Um, but basically what, uh, what we're finding out of uh, muscle testing uh, kinesiology is that when you put one of these rings anywhere, like on your laptop computer, it can be on the screen, it can be anywhere on your computer, that it is uh, making the computer no longer harmful to your body. And that's what we're getting out of muscle testing, and that's what we're finding on the cell phones, is that you can put them anywhere on your cell phone. Um, and again, I would really like to uh, do the GDV photo imaging, uh, the biofeedback to show, you know, with and without the rings. So again, um, there's a lot of evidence that we need to gather on this stuff, and which is really why I'm asking anybody here who has any, um, you know, any inkling of desire to, to work on this stuff, I would love to work with you on getting you some of the tools to, uh, to do those experiments with. So, because um, this whole thing for me, it's about, um, this whole thing for me, it's about bringing this to, to everybody uh, to be helpful and beneficial to the entire world. Um, and yes, I still do sell the tools and I do not charge an outrageous price considering the, the work that goes into the tools. Um, so I try to keep the price down so that everybody can utilize them and play with them. Um, so now since we put the video out about two years ago, about a year and a half ago, uh, there's people all over the world that are making tensor rings and uh, just playing around with different uh, forms and configurations of the rings. Uh, so it's really great to get everybody's feedback all over the world on what they're doing with this stuff. Um, so that's what I'm here to do is just to encourage that. You mentioned something about uh, using a CD and a ring to modify weather. Is this like the Wilhelm Reich uh, Cloudbuster type machine, or what's on the CD? Uh, sounds of rain, or what? It's uh, they they somehow took the frequency out of a rain cloud. So whatever the machines they did that with, when you hear it inaudibly, it's just a really high pitched frequency. Um, You're recording the frequency of the rain drops. Uh, so my understanding is whatever um, instrument they were using, they aimed it at a rain cloud. And then they took the the uh, the middle frequency there, and then they uh, replicated that and recorded it audially, so that you would play that into the harmonizer. So whenever you buy one of the harmonizers from Lifelight Technologies, uh, you should get a CD with it, that rain cloud frequency CD. Okay, so you're not actually playing the CD; you're just taking the CD and projecting the energy image. Um, actually, they suggest to play the CD into the harmonizer, put like headphones on your harmonizer and play the CD into it. Um, but uh, what we're finding and what uh, Valerie Solheim found was that uh, you can just pull that information off the CD with a large crystal or a tensor ring. Mm -hmm. And then it's just pulling that information off and broadcasting it. And uh, she firmly believes that, and through our own you know, muscle testing and divination, we've uh, found the same results. Has it been effective? Um, I, I haven't really actually played around with it much, but uh, Valerie, who works with the bees and she works with uh, several other people with their hives, um, she really believes in it. Um, and she's, uh, she's a pretty qualified uh, beekeeper and author. And uh, With your intent, I guess it would be pretty powerful. 
and many people rather than just one? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You bet. Are there any further questions? Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Vesco.